Hi folks, I'm Lincoln Best with the Oregon Bee Atlas. We have a bunch of random prepped material here, pinned and labeled appropriately. So what I'm gonna do is just show you how to sort your material to morpho species groups. Um, now, how you do this will depend on how much experience and knowledge you have about all the different bees. So if you're just beginning, um, your results will be coarse, and if you have years and years of experience, a lot of these you can sort immediately to species because you'll know what they are. So what I'll do is I'll just choose a couple basic characters that I can see by eye, and then I'll do it that way. So come on in here and take a look. So just looking at these, the first thing I'm going to do is pull out all the things I think are bumblebees. Um, so got these ones, big fuzzy bees. If you attended the bee course, you know that female bumblebees have a corbicula. Corbicula. <laughs> so we'll pull out all the bumblebees. There's maybe a couple dozen or so. You get the idea. So maybe I won't pull them all out, or maybe I will. It's not too many. And then you can start to see as you pull the bumblebees out that, okay, you know, maybe there's a few different species here. If you really know your bumblebees, you'll probably know what species they are on the wing. And so, is that all the bumblebees? We're not gonna do these ones because they don't have labels. And so that is all the bumblebees. So we'll just take a look at these for a moment. I think, uh, just to emphasize, it is important before you do this step, you're gonna have your labels on them. So don't do this before you have your, your first labels on. That's right. So just looking at these bumblebees, we can see that most of them are yellow-faced bumblebees, but we have two that are not. And so you can just see these ones all have a yellow face and yellow shoulders, uh, but these two specimens have a black face and much more extensive yellow on the thorax. And then also the first two segments of the abdomen have some colored hairs, whereas these ones don't. So there we go. Now we've got two species of bumblebees sorted to morpho species. These ones are Bombus vosnesenskii, and these are Bombus griseocollis, because I know the bumblebees. So what are we going to do next? Well, an obvious choice, just looking at these trays, um, are to pull out all of these bees that have ridiculously long antennae, because that's easy to see. And so we'll do that. We'll pull out all of these bees with ridiculously long antennae. These are all going to be male melisodes, some are longhorn bees, and in these samples there's quite a few because the samples were collected in the summer and in an area where there are lots and lots of composites, which some summer longhorn bees really like. And so you can see that it's quite easy to see all these bees with the antennae that are almost as long as their bodies. And just those all together. So there's, I'm not going to do them all because there's another 40, but if we just look at this box, we can see that maybe there's two different species here. So we can take, take a closer look and we see that some are, have really pale pubescence, so really kind of white hairs, and the other ones are quite tawny or brown or tan colored. And so, you know, maybe those are two different species, so we can maybe look for other characters that might support that suspicion we can look at the extent of the yellow on the face because these male bees have a yellow maculated clypeus. So I can just, just take a quick eyeball at that and then compare that to one of the 
males with lighter pubescence and it looks like maybe they're just a single species with some variation in the hair color. So there we go, we've got a whole bunch of our longhorn bees sorted out. So would out. you sort those to those two color types? Um, I wouldn't because I suspect they're all the same. Um, but for sure, if you're just learning, you could try and, you know, you could separate them by color. You could look for other characters under the microscope if you wanted. Um, so Lincoln, this is, uh, uh, for those who took the B course, they were used to uh, having the specimen and working through the key. This would be before working through the key. That's right. You, what you would do is you'd pull out everything that you think is a bumblebee you'd sort them into what you think might be different bumblebee species or morpho species or different groups and then you would run them through the key. So you'd start with your first bumblebee, run it through the key in the field guide, um, hopefully get the right answer and then you could run the remainder from that series through to just to confirm that yep these are all the same things and then you could apply your name and then you'd move on to your second group of bumblebees, run those through the key see if maybe these are the same species or two different species um, and so it's it's a good method to work through your material and, and try and get names on things and then also um, it's a it's a learning process as well because if you run all of these through the key maybe you find that this one specimen is a different species and so then you'll learn that specific character for that species and then next time you sort your bumblebees you have another extra piece of information you can use to sort them and that's why when we just first started here I said depending on how much experience you have will depend on how um, finely you're able to sort these things on a first pass. Um, so when I do it I can sort everything by eye to the generic level and then lots of the species I can pull out and identify them by eye to species level too. Um, but you know when you're starting you're probably going to sort them fairly coarsely to bumblebees or things you think are maybe a family level mm -hmm. you know this is a mining bee this is a sweat bee this is a, a longhorn bee and so on so this is something you, the, uh, you may not even use a microscope for this is going to be an eyeball quick sort yes I absolutely agree this is something that you probably wouldn't use a microscope for but of course if it's right there um, you know you can just slide over to the scope and you know, confirm or reject your suspicions on various things. So right now, I'm pulling out these things. So I'm going to pull out everything I think is a Megachelidae, so a leafcutter bee family. Um, and then we continue on. And that, this will be the first pass for the Megachelidae, so I'm going to pull out all the Megachelids. Um, you might do it differently if you're not able to recognize which family they're in by eye. You might just pull out, um, you know, say European wool carter bees because you can, you can recognize them, that they're quite a bit different than all the other bees in your collection, right? So you pull out those things, maybe separate these. And because osmias are often able to be recognized um, by eye, you know, all those shiny blue and green bees, you can put those separate into their own little category. So you're going to start uh, broadly and then kind of, uh, it's kind of like uh, uh, wheedling through. You're sort of like got it. finally dividing and, and dividing it, and dividing. It also depends on how much material you have. Here we have, you know, 125 specimens. But if you're at home and you have 5,000 specimens, the process will be a bit different. Um, you probably want to start as finely as you can. So you pull out maybe all the bumblebees out of all of your pinned and labeled material and just work on your bumblebees first. And then you could pull out, you know, a tribe or um, depending on how much experience and skill you have, um, whatever kind of group you're able to recognize and then work through those. Um, so are these all the leaf cutters now? No, there's some over here. So we got one more Osmia couple more Mega Kylie. Um, so, you know, this is all of our Mega Kylidae family bees from the box. So we've got the Mega Kylie on top, the Anthidium in the corner, and the Osmia there. 
you got it. And so you can see just with your eye and hopefully on the video, um, the Megachylae are black bees with pale hairs. The Anthidiines are um, bees with maculated colors on their integument. And then obviously most of the Osmia are going to be uh, metallic blue, green, or dark kind of indigo. And so you're able to, by eye, recognize those. And then, you know, there's not a lot that's left over at this point. Um, so what if you're, um, you didn't take the B course and so some of this is uh, really challenging. Uh, you don't know the genera that well. Can mm -hmm. you still do this kind of sorting? Sure, and I'm, again, it's, um, it's a learning process. So what you're doing is just using the powers of observation to try and recognize what the differences are. Does it look like a bee? Is it hairy? Does it look like a wasp? Mm -hmm. You know, because when you're pinning up these things you caught, until you're familiar with everything, sometimes, especially for some of these really small things too, you're not going to immediately recognize that this is a bee or a wasp because they can look very, very similar. So um, the whole process is a learning process. And as you get more and more experience, you'll do it more quickly, more efficiently, and with much higher accuracy. Um, but even when you're just first learning, it's a, it's a great task to try and figure out how many different bumblebees do I have here? Mm -hmm. You know, can I separate out the males and the females by eye? Um, and you, you can learn to do that. But like everything, you got to put in some time and make a lot of mistakes, and also have someone that can check your work for you. And so through the atlas, I'll be checking your guys' work. And so the last thing I'm pulling out here is these are um, all the Halictidae, so all the little sweat bees. Um, some are bigger, some are smaller, um, and these are all from the pollinator garden here at OSU. And so we have a lot of Halictus legatus, which are the bigger ones. Um, we have quite a few um, Halictus um, tripartitis, which are really abundant in the garden. So th this is going to be a lot of these smaller ones. Um, and this is a few more here, so a few more legatus. And then of course we, like all bee collections, we have a, a smattering of um, little tiny lazio blossom sweat bees. And so, you know, in five minutes, we can see that we've separated out our Megachelidae, um, all of these male longhorn bees, um, the bumblebees, and what's left at this point are a few wasps um, that are mixed in, uh, you know, one fly and then a couple sneaky honeybees. Um, there's actually a fair number of honeybees in here. They, uh, this Rest person really liked their honeybees. Yeah. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so I guess the next step is you've now got your, uh, for some people this will be the end point. They'll go through and figure out if they can get the genus, but for some of these groups like the, um, the Halictidae, they may go through one of the keys we've got up on the, you can try and work through them yourself. That's right. Um, and you know um, it takes time so if you know if you're really enthusiastic about this and you put in the time um, your skills will increase and at some point you'll be able to do this easily and then also teach other people excellent thanks so much link all right catch you later bye